Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. If you've never been here before, welcome, welcome. If you have been here and you are subscribed, which is a fantastic idea, then welcome back. Anyway, this week I have been playing with my Klimt Women 5x7 masks to create gift tags for the holidays. And this week I am making these dramatic gold and red prints on black tag cardstock. And aside from amazing blingy gift tags, I thought that they would be great on baked goods. You know, if you give baked goods at the holidays, what a beautiful way then to dress it up with one of these tags. So if you've got a few minutes, let's go check it out. Welcome back to the studio. So today I have been playing with my Klimt Women set of four five by seven masks to create gift tags for the holidays because gold and Klimt are definitely two things that go well with the holidays. So these are on Joggles number eight, smooth and sturdy black tags. And they are the five by seven masks. This is from the Klimt inspired uh, collection and they are available as a set or individually with joggles and stencils are still on sale until December 2nd at 25% off. So um, they are, uh, let's see, so, we, so I don't forget to tell you the names of them. This one is Contemplation, this one is Daydream, this one is Enrobed, and this one is Meditation. Okay, so I'm working on this weird size gel plate that I found in my stash. It's from Dina Wakely, and I don't even know what size it is. So you can use any size of gel plate. You could use a five by seven, but I saw this in my stash. I don't even know if it's made anymore. If it is, I will link it down below the video, but I will tell you that it came in a set of three plates, um, a circular one, a, a vertical narrow one like this, and a slightly taller narrow one. So if I can find that three piece set, uh, online or just this size. I will link it below the video along with all the other product links. Okay, so the paints that I'm using, I grabbed some of this Art Alchemy Art Sparks paint because since I'm making gift tags and they're not part of my artwork, I don't have to be so particular about the fantastic quality of my golden paints. So I did have this in a nice gold, but I couldn't find the Pyrol Red Light in any other paint. So here's my favorite golden in the Pyrol Red Light. That's going to be my accent color, but your accent color could be something totally different. You might want to do teal. That's another good one. Uh, maybe some green. Uh, you could play with your accent color, but here's the prototypes that I've been working on. So for this one, which is enrobed, I have her, I like her slightly off to the side. And we do need to keep in mind, as far as placement goes, the punch hole for the ribbon at the top. So you don't want to put the, uh, the mask up too high on the tag uh, so that you lose the ribbon. Now you're also going to see that I don't have full flood coverage of gold on here. It's kind of trailing off at the edge here and trailing off at the top edge. I like the uh, less perfected look of it. And that's also the the um, technique or the style that I used when I came back to add a little bit of an accent color. So the most important part that you get totally in focus and good connection and with great detail is the face. So if the body kind of gets a little chipped up or isn't complete, uh, that's totally fine. You just want to make sure that you have a good uh, impression of the face. And I do like leaving some of the black sort of showing around the edges. You may prefer to full flood it with paint, but I'm going to show you that I really think this gives it a painterly effect to leave that. So that means you're going to apply your gold paint in an incomplete amount on the plate keeping that in mind. Um, this one again is da -da 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 -da, meditation and she's got great hair. And I, again, left room at the top. This one is contemplation. Um, she's really beautiful. Uh, I love the curly swirlies on all of them really. But um, again, I've got the, a little bit less, but the left off edges and my accent color. And you could do an ac a different accent color on all of them. Uh, that one was uh, contemplation. Um, and then this one uh, is the largest of them. This is daydream. So she has a really big face and the braid and her shoulder 
And she really um, runs off the, the tag more than any of the others, but she's got a big, bold presence, which I love. So um, so let me show you how I made these. We'll make one or two of them together. You're going to love it because it's so simple, but it's so dramatic with that metallic gold on the black. Now, you could also use other metallics for this. You could use copper if you had that in your stash or any other sort of gold tone metallic. Um, there are definitely other art alchemy colors. I will link those below uh, that are in the gold sort of family. Um, you could use silver. You could use bronze or copper. Okay, so... Um, and here you can see my girl that runs off uh, the, the, the tag, but it doesn't really matter because the main point of focus is the face. So the key to the gold paint is to apply not too much, but not too little. You don't want such a thick layer that when you press, everything's sliding around because then nothing's in uh, sharp focus and you get blurred edges. So I'm using my palette knife to put out a little bit of this, and I'm going to put it right in the middle. And then the other important um, way, uh, the tool that I found was the two is the two inch Speedball Deluxe Sprayer because, like I said, I don't want to coat the whole area. I want to leave some of those black edges, so I need to use the small sprayer and kind of let the paint run off the sides and the edges, but give myself a good layer right in the middle where the mask will be. Then you need to consider that. All of these are going to print backwards of what how you see them. And you'll notice in mine, and this is just a personal preference, I like them to be facing right. I like them all to be looking forward. So that means that you need to put them looking the other way when you put them on the plate. So let's put this girl looking left. Let's make sure we need leave room at the top for the punch. We're going to take the black tag and we're going to line that up. We can push her off to the side a little bit, and we're going to press. If you have dirty fingers and you don't want to get the back of the tag messy, you can use a, a sheet of uh, clean paper on top. I am winging it and living on the edge and hoping that I don't get it messy on the back, but, uh, you know. Now, you need to apply a lot of pressure, especially in the face area, so you get really good detail, and the edges you don't have to uh, worry about as much if you're going for this look that I have achieved. I'm going to lift it up and have a look at it. And before I dismount it, I see that I need a little more pressure on her face. And then when I pull it up and look at it again, it looks good. So before I take it off, I'm going to do that. And here I have those nice edges and good impression of my mask and a good bit of black around the edges and putting her slightly off center has given me some room for my red accent. So, so I just want to reiterate, I know I say it while I'm in the studio, but I just want to reiterate the, the accent color on these tags could be any color of your choosing and you could do multiple accent colors. And the best part about that packet of ribbon that I got is it's got tons of colors in it. So you can pick up your accent color with the ribbon. So let's do another one. So we're just going to lift her off and put out a little bit more paint. I could have gone with a little bit more uh, as far as leaving the black edges because this plate is bigger than the tag. So with that in mind, I'm going to try it again. I still love the way it came out, but I probably have still done too much. Okay, so uh, let's see. With this one... Um, we're going to have her facing left so that she's facing right and slightly down. And with her, the same thing. Make sure that you don't get the faces too close to the edge of the card compositionally. That does not look good. It is way better to let her hair get cropped off than to have her face too close to the edge. So she looks like she's being uh, squeezed by the edge of the card. So... Again, lots of pressure on where the face is. And before you take it off, hold it at the bottom, lift it at the top. She's stuck to it. But there I can see that I've got good impression on her face. And I've got nice leftover black edges on that one. I'm really happy with the leftover black edges on that one. Both of them, really. And this is the beauty of imperfection. These are never going to come out the same every time you do them. They are never going to come out absolutely perfect because they're handmade. And that's what makes them super special. 
as gift tags uh, that your friends and family should really appreciate. Okay, so one more time here. We're going to go with our, um, this one. Uh, we're going to put her down from the top slightly to the right so that we've got room for her face and grab the tag and press. So it's pretty simple. Um, these uh, number eight uh, smooth and sturdy black tags are nice because they have a nice smooth surface, which allows them to get a good impression of the mask and they pick up uh, the paint off of the gel plate really nicely with that smooth surface. So that's always, um, uh, it just comes out really nice on these tags. Okay, so I'm gonna lift and again, check to make sure the face is good primarily and she looks good, and then lift. Oh, I love that, look at that. I've got great black edges on that one. Beautiful black edges on that one. And we'll do the last one. Since we're on a roll, I was really only gonna show you one, but uh, since we're on a roll, and the paint's out, and the plate's out, and the cards are out, so why not? Okay, so a little bit of that. We've got our Daydreamer. She's a little harder to determine where you're going to put her. Uh, her hair can get cut off. So I'm sort of centering her face. And then putting my card sort of up the center. And applying the most pressure right where her facial features are. And she looks good. And another one with some great black edges. All right. I love that. They came out great. Uh, while I was making them in prep for the video, every single one of them did not come out great. So that's good. It's a relief. Okay. So now I'm going to just get a cleanup sheet and take this gold off the plate so I can get prepared for the next step. And I'm going to get the gold off my brayer. And I am using a sheet of my nine by 12 pad of rice paper always as my brayer cleanup sheet because ultimately I will put a stencil print over this and make it um, a sheet of collage paper. So rather than cleaning my stuff off on scrap junk paper, I am using the same pad of rice paper that I used to create all my collage papers and that is the nine by 12 sketch pad. So, okay, I digress. So. The next thing, now that we've got the plate and the brayer clean, is to put out the pyrrole red light. And I'm just going to use this as a palette. I tried printing the cards on this, and I didn't get the, mm, the results, exactly the results that I wanted. So I'm going to move this off to the side a little bit. I'm going to zoom this out a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to put this down, and I'm going to just grab some red on the brayer and then I am going to add it as an accent and I'm gonna I'm able to use this two inch brayer to put it where I want it I don't want to stay completely away from her I want to go over her light pressure harder pressure uh, less paint on the brayer if you want to use a little bit of paint so if it's too heavy roll it off and then try it because we just want to add a little of an accent color. Um, I try not to put it right over her face like I just did, um, but rather around. So I'm just gonna grab that off a little bit. And then you can see that you get this really nice accent. And like I said, it doesn't have to be red. This is a, Pyrrol red light is a, is a very orangey red. So it's not like a, an apple red so much. But uh, you can experiment with different accent colors, but I have been playing around and I really like the way these look together. So again, I'm just gonna roll it in the red. I'm gonna come in here and say, uh, put a little there with a light touch. Oh, I really like that. And then come across here and maybe a little on that side. And then boom, you've got just some beautiful accent colors rather than just all the straight up gold. And this doesn't take much paint. 
which is nice. So here we've got, again, I hit her face, so I'm just going to pull that out with my finger. I don't want to put red in all my leftover open black areas either because that defeats the purpose of leaving the black edges. So here's another one. Beautiful, little bit of accent. And the last one, all with the same squeeze of paint. I've got a great big area here where I can put it. And this little two inch sprayer is so great for this because you can really control the application of color. So there's our last one. So here I've created the, um, the meditation, the enrobed, the da, 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 contemplation, and daydream. So what I will do with these is add accent ribbon. Um, so I will uh, put through the holes and the tags when everything dries, either black, gold, or orangey red, or all three with a curling ribbon and curl them to go as my gift tags. And I also want to suggest that um, the holiday season is a great time for baking. I do a lot of baking and um, making cranberry bread and pumpkin bread and cookies. And these gift cards are a great way to tie around a loaf of bread or to put on the top of a box of cookies that maybe you're giving your neighbor or your family members. I love these as... Um, even if you, this is a good enough size, even if you wanted to jot out the recipe or, or um, give a little story about what's in it, um, there's a lot of options you can do with these larger size tags. And I just love the idea of adding them to baked goods. So, well, I guess that's it. This week is a short one. I'm making up for last week, which was entirely too long. And if you didn't see it, you might want to see it because I made some amazing gift tags last week uh, with all kinds of techniques. And the techniques, including from this week, could certainly applied could certainly be applied to your mixed media projects. You don't have to just use them for gift tags. You can maybe use them for note cards. You could use them for mixed media backgrounds, for small mixed media pieces. The opportunities are endless. And I would be remiss if I didn't remind you that stencils are still on sale at Joggles for 25% off until I think December 2nd, 2022. So don't forget, stock up. And I'll see you back here next week.